guys are struggling a wee bit with the reverse de la Hiva, so I don't want to be flat on my back. So I'm not just putting in a reverse de la Hiva hook, I'm putting a foot and Tara's hip with me flat on my back. So whatever side my hook is in, I'm turning on to my hip. So I'm on my side. There's, there's some guards, like half guard, knee sheet, half guard, Z guard. You know, jump to your knees, bro. I want to be on my side. Okay, reverse down the heaving stands up. I want to be on my side. Drop to your knees, close guard. I'm going to be flat on my back. There'll be certain guards here on your side. Certain guards work better on their side. So think about if he's on the side playing that guard, you want to put him flat on the back because that's the weakness in the guard. If he's flat on his back, you want to put him on the side because that's the weakness in the guard. We're going to look at passing the lasso guards. So if you're not familiar with that, I have double sleeve. I have, I'm going to put a lasso in. Again, when we were playing, um, the Omoplata Mesa Cycle, we were doing a lot, lot of setups from the Omoplata with a shallow lasso. Okay, it, it's good for um, a car driver tries to drive in, maybe you keep them back with that. And when the moment's right, I can weave it inside and start working into the Omoplata. Um, we're going to look at, more of a deep lasso, so um, a double sleeve on car. Instead of just coming shallow, I'm going to come all the way through. Notice the way I'm on the side. Watch what happens when I thread it through and I put my fist in my thigh and I flatten back. So now from here, I'm flat on my back. This is the strength of the lasso guard. Especially when you start to grab the collar. The car is trying to posture from here. It's difficult, even if I'm not grabbing the collar, trying to posture. And his reactions of trying to posture can give me sweeps and stuff. Okay, so let's talk about how do we pass the stuff. So first thing you're looking to see is, is he playing the lasso guard? Efficiently, does he know the guard? So in other words, when Kyrg throws in that lasso and maybe he's deep, see the way he went shin deep and he's pulling that instep under my armpit, that sucks. First thing I'm looking to see is where his hand is. If it's here, I'll just pull it back. Good, to go. Good players though will keep their fist in their own thigh. Now we're up against someone that knows this guard. He's either going to play this with a foot on the hip or with a spider hook. We'll look at the one up next time. Let's look at the foot on the hip. So the first grip I'm making is just on the pads. I need to remove this, but before I do that, Kyra can really control my posture with that lasso. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drive, grab the um, first grip on the pads. I'm going to drive into them a little bit, and then I'm going to pull my right elbow back towards my hip and swim the back of my hand against Carl's thigh. From here, and drive in. Bring my elbow back and pull the back of my hand against the thigh. Now from here, I start to move, uh, move back and move the distance. And now I cut that angle pretty much for the under pass thigh, both my pass thigh. I start now to shove the collar to me. And then I fill that space with my shoulder, the hand that makes the grip on, the, on his pants comes across and I put my elbow in front of his head. So now we still have this lasso to break but it's very very easily broken from here. I just rotate my wrist and punch that through. Many things that I can do is going to be What we don't want to do is break it from the lasso guard itself because you're just going to wreck yourself. We talked about earlier in this mesocycle what is in the gating grips. Okay. If, I, if Charles has his fist in front of his thigh from here and I'm going to give myself a 30 trying to break that grip, I'm going to be tired, using up my energy. So I want to cut an angle and then I'll break it when I put him in a bad position. So from here we're going to make that first initial grip. Then I'm going to crouch down a little bit, drive in, and bring my right elbow back towards my hip to create a little bit of space so I can bring the back of my hand here. Sometimes you go up against people with just a really good lasso, but I've still managed to just turn my fist in like this. I haven't got it, the, the back of my hand. Anymore. And now from here, I start to back off a little bit, and now it's just all about creating a little bit of space. 
So as I move my hip back, I'm shelving this, dropping my shoulder in the car. Now I don't want them moving away from me, so that grip lets go, and then I need to wedge. And now I put weight on it. And now the time to break the grip is when he's in a bad position. I just rotate my wrist, punch that through. And if the hand's still there, you can pull it in. And if the arm's still in here, you can start. And then, one more time on that. So, from our lasso, connection here and there. Look, he's got this power in the swing. First grip, and the pass. You drive in the car a little bit. And then I bring my elbow back towards my hip and rotate, trying to get the back of my hand against the side. Now that's by backing off a little bit, and I'm starting to shelf his knee, spiking with my shoulder, and then I'm bringing my elbow to the far side. Even if my head gets stuck in there, it doesn't really matter from there. I just rotate. Okay. So that guy's the 